Hi, my name is Jen Aguirre. I am a personal trainer slash life coach. Come join me on this journey as I put things into perspective on what got me into being the woman I am today. My name is Jen Aguirre. Um, I am a health coach, personal trainer. Been doing it for 22 years now, 23 years. Um, and there's a lot more to my story that we're going to get to in okay. this uh, interview. Sounds good. So tell me, what's your mission? Okay. Um, my mission, I truly feel like I was put on this earth because I am here. Okay, how do I explain this? I am here to be given obstacles because I proved my mental strength 23 years ago when I had a nervous breakdown. My life completely was a hot mess, which we'll get into. Um, and I proved myself to whatever, I'm not going to get all religious, to a higher power of some sort. And now my mission is I'm given these obstacles, I get through them, and I'm supposed to be documenting them because I'm here so that I can teach people how to be the best version of themselves, teach people how to take their pain away, um, teach people that life doesn't have to be doesn't matter, like, what's the saying? Um, it's not the cards that you were dealt, it's the way you play your hand. Uh, so I'm teaching people how to play their best hand. I'm Miles, uh, and I live out in, in Wisconsin. She finds that what, what drives you and helps you go forward. And I've always been able to meet every goal. Every time I've trained with her, she was there to help me get back through after my Achilles tendon ruptured. Um, she, she never gives up on you. So why did you get into fitness? Okay, so um, I have a pretty troubled childhood, and I believe we're going to talk about that a little bit more in detail later, but um, I um, was 19 years old, sick all the time. Uh, I went to Vegas, actually, it's crazy, because I went to Vegas, my cousin was going to UNLV, and I went to Vegas to visit her, and she was like, why are you sick all the time? And um, I'm like, I don't know, I just keep getting these stomach aches, and she made me go to the doctor, and for years, the doctors just kept telling me that it was like stress. My life is stressful. And um, finally, fast forward, when I was 21, they finally did a colonoscopy and an upper GI series, and that's when I was diagnosed with colitis and Crohn's. They put me on medication. Then there's a lot that happened in between 21 and 23. Um, I was beat by my ex-boyfriend. I opened up a restaurant, the Twin Towers. There's a whole lot. And um, I just... I was sick, I was on medication for a really long time and I decided that I wanted to become a personal trainer so that I can learn about everything. And I've always loved training. I started training when I was 16 years old. Um, what really got me in was when I was 16, I was walking um, the boardwalk at, New at um, Long Beach and I saw this woman and she was sh like huge, jacked. If I think about it now, she kind of looks like I look. And um, I went up to her and I was like, oh my God, if you don't mind me asking, how old are you? And she's like, I'm 71 years old. And I was like, I am gonna look like you when I get older. My name is Sam, I'm 52 years old. Uh, I've been a client of Jen's now for seven years. I have to tell you that two things that Jen has taught me that has literally changed my life. One, the importance of working out with a plan and two, the importance of what you put in your mouth. So I asked my best friend Jeremy at the time if he could teach me how to work out. So I've always loved it since then. Um, and then when I started getting sick, I was like, you know what, I wanna learn more about movement. I wanna help people and I wanna get myself into remission. So I got certified at 23, but that was right around the time that all those other things happened to me. Um, and I was in a psych ward for seven days after having a nervous breakdown, after binging and purging, after my boyfriend beat the crap out of me, after I was about to open up a restaurant with him that I really didn't want to open up. Um, I wanted to be a trainer, but him and my dad both said that they'd be embarrassed to admit that um, I was dating or my daughter was a personal trainer. So I never went with that and I went with just, you know, working and owning a restaurant and after he beat me up and threw me down a flight of stairs, I, um, I signed the restaurant over to him and moved in with my mom and then my life kind of like fell apart then and that's when I was like binging and purging in my mom's attic, not knowing what I wanted to do with my life and then I got out 
of the hospital, started working at New York Sports Club, and uh, went to the school called East Coast Instructor Training School. And the way that I learn is I, I need something in person. Like I got my NASM certification, I got pre and postnatal, older adult, youth, ISSA, spent weekends taking courses, but I needed a course. Like I needed to go somewhere. So the this school, it was uh, two hours, or three hours a day, three days a week. So I took that for three months while I worked the front desk at New York Sports Club. And then by April, I was on the gym floor and I was training people. And within the first year, which I didn't even start in January, within the first year, I was top 20 in the nation. Mm. Then the second year, I was number 11. And then the third year, I was number nine. And then the fourth year, when I left New York Sports Club, I was number seven. So that's like town sport international. Um, it was Pennsylvania Sports Club, um, Washington Sports Club, New Jersey Sports Club. There were like 4,000 trainers and I was ranked in the nation, so. There are many things that we can call Jenna Gary. Motivator, inspirer, survivor. So many things, but what I like to call her is friend. She never lacks energy, never lacks the words of encouragement that even I may need. She puts her heart and soul into everything that she does, into herself, into her own workouts, into her family first and foremost, into her clients, into the company Blackstone Labs that she works for. She literally will give 100% to every single thing before she takes anything for herself. That's what makes me love her. That's what makes me feel inspired by her on a daily basis. Jen, I love you. Um, my father uh, laid multiple hands on me. Um, I don't know if it was that maybe I reminded, my, I reminded him of I, I reminded him of him, I don't know, whatever. Um, I was this tough female, uh, very independent, I had a little bit of a mouth on me, um, so we bat heads all the time. Um, my father was uh, very inappropriate with me on multiple occasions, I'm just gonna leave it at that. Um, but my dad used to like, throw hands with me. Like, I mean, we didn't throw hands, but he would. Um, and finally, at, um, and he never laid a hand on my mom or my sister. Um, those of you, I mean, I'm gonna really show my age here, when TVs used to have antennas, um, I got whipped. With I had one of those. Okay. 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 Well, right. What are you, 12? <laughs> 23. <laughs> so I got whipped with a TV antenna. Uh, silk shirts, belts, like the old school where they would snap the belt and then my dad would beat me with those. So, um, I, uh, um, so that is kind of how like my childhood was and um, he wouldn't we wouldn't talk like we went like nine months without talking and then all of a sudden one day he would like need me to help him with something in the house and then all of a sudden he would find a reason to talk to me mm -hmm. um, he played mind games with me uh, like one day I wanted to be a dancer um, I, I took a whole semester of dance in college um, modern jazz tap uh, hip-hop and but even back before then I used to take dance classes and he would like show me an art like this is what some of the things he would do he would show me an article and be like look they're having like a and this is when I'm like 15 they're having like auditions and then I, the next day and it's the next day and then I would be getting ready to go to the audition the next day and he'd be like what are you doing you're not good enough to do that like total mind F with me mm -hmm. so he um, so Again, he would lay hands on me all the time, and finally when I was like around 16 years old, I fought back, and that was when I left. Um, and I was dating somebody at the time. I actually ran away from home a couple times. I was dating somebody at the time, and I got pregnant at 16 years old. Um, I got an abortion at 16 years old. Um, I don't remember a lot before my nervous breakdown. A lot of the things that I remember, I remember from stories that my mom and sister told me just from like PTSD and too much trauma. So a lot of, also a lot of my memories are from the outside. Like I was molested by my next door neighbor. I remember it from a tree. I, all the beatings I remember from an outside view. Like my father beating me up, I remember it from the top of the stairs, watching me get beat up. So you're yeah. yeah. So I pulled myself out of that. So I, um, uh, so, um, I was, I got an abortion. The guy helped me. I don't even remember the details of it. And I stayed at his apartment and I, you, I, I, I will say rape because he forced himself on me. 
So, like, it's not like I was, like, raped in an alley, which it doesn't make either one of them worse than the other one, but, like... No consent. He forced himself on me. And you're not supposed to after you get an abortion. Back then, the way that it was when I was 19, because I'm, I'm going to be 46 now, um, you're not supposed to have sex right afterwards. Yeah. And it was two days of just all day long. And there was, like... Mm -hmm. blood everywhere and he, whatever and I don't even remember how I got out of it but I left I never heard from him um then like six months later the boyfriend that I dated before him um he wanted me back and he attacked me at a house party and almost raped me like I literally left the party um, he followed me to my car, I was wearing a little dress, and he pulled my underwear off, and then the, some of the guys from the, the house pulled him off of me, like, right in time. Um, and from that point on, it's like I was, I don't know, I guess I, 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 was, I was broken. And that was probably where all the stomach issues started. Like, they say that Crohn's disease and colitis are in the family of IBS, and it is genetic, and my mom has IBS, but, like, I feel like it's worse when you grow up in trauma. My name is Miley Ola. I'm 38 years old, and I've been with Jen and doing this program for about eight months now, and since then I've lost a total of 36 pounds. Uh, before I started this program, I was never happy with my body image. I had low self-esteem, low confidence, never enough energy to play with my kids. Um, but ever since I started this program, I can honestly say that I'm in the best shape of my life, both physically and mentally. I fast forward, I dated a guy. We were um, opening up a restaurant, living together, and uh, like two weeks before the restaurant was about to open, um, I was taking a dance class and the dance instructor was literally um, walking around the room doing like 10 seconds of partner dance with because it was a Latin dance class. And he danced with me for 10 seconds along with the other 25 people in the class. And after the class, my ex-boyfriend, the one that beat me up, he like, like pushed him and told him to never lay hands on my girl. And then he pushed me in public then we went back to the house and then he beat me up, threw me down a flight of stairs, all that other stuff. My father came to the house, uh, coincidentally, because my father loved him, and uh, came to the house literally right after he beat me up and uh, told me to take my clothes, go over to my mom's house, pack a bag, go over to my mom's house, and he was going to call me. And he called me an hour later and he said at least it was only the first time he hit you. So I'm thinking my dad's going to be like the typical Italian gap dad, like beat him up or put him in the freezer or something like that. But my dad lent us uh, $25,000 to open up the restaurant. So my father wanted his money back more than he wanted to stick up for his girl. So he stayed in contact with him. I didn't talk to my dad for a couple years um, and he stayed in contact. I heard that he went over to his restaurant almost every single night, hung out with him while it was opening. And uh, that was it. And so then I, he didn't even know that I was in the hospital. He didn't even know that I had a nervous breakdown until like a year after that happened. And then, you know, that's, that's, that's the 16 to 23 version of me. My name is Jimmy and I've been with Jen since December 4th of 2022. Uh, approximately 10 weeks now. Uh, when I first started, I was about 232 pounds. Now I'm down to about 200 pounds. Since then, I've gotten leaner, more confident. Uh, back to playing sports with guys half my age, having them trying to keep up with me because my cardio has been through the roof. Uh, Jen is intensely focused on your development, uh, what you do, your nutrition, everything. Jen is the complete package. She does everything from nutrition to um, health development to personal development all the way through the actual working out in the gym and what you actually do. I can confidently say that she understands exactly what I'm going through and what you will be going through if you, you know, train with Jen. So you'll get the complete package for everything from lifting the fork to lifting the weights. Tell me about the Twin Towers. Um, so I was uh right after all of that stuff happened. That's kind of like what led me into the full breakdown of everything. Cause I left his house and then um, I was work, I, I left where I was living and I was also working at a restaurant as a waitress. So um, 
when I left, they want, and, and what, this is all while I was getting ready to uh, open up the restaurant with him. So the person that owned the other restaurant that I was a waitress at and that he worked at, because he hadn't left yet, so he was like the head chef over at a restaurant, they knew somebody that was opening up a restaurant in Manhattan. And I'm like, all right, I might as well like just stay in this because I've been being a waitress and I've been managing restaurants for a while now. So I stayed in it and I uh, literally was getting ready to get on the train when the first tower hit. I was on the train when the second tower hit. I got to uh, Penn Station at 10.02. They shut down all transportation, stayed in the city until like 2 o'clock in the afternoon and then walked home, walked the bridge. Uh, got home back to Rockville Center and then my, my one of my family members picked me up and took me back to my mom's house because she lived in Baldwin at the time, which is like one town over, uh, at like 7 o'clock at night. And that is like right after that when I'm like, what am I going to do with my life? Like I want to be a trainer. I can't do the, I don't want to do this restaurant thing. I called up the owner and I was like, I can't. I was on my way into the city so I can interview a manager to like my assistant. Um, and, uh, I said, I can't do this. I can't come back into the city. And so like, I wasn't traumatized because I didn't really see anything. I was at Penn station. I wasn't at the twin towers, but that's literally where, where my life kind of like fell apart. And that's where I hit rock bottom. Mm -hmm. And that's when the binging and purging started. So over here on my shoulder, I have the twin towers with smoke. And then this is the, uh, the Phoenix, which is the burning bird, which symbolizes rebirth. Um, same with butterflies. That's why I have so many of those. Cause they symbolize like the caterpillar to the butterfly. Caterpillar. Yeah. And then um, uh, these are all like the um, zodiac signs of all the people that impacted my life, negative and positive. So like my dad's on here also. My name is Dee Dee Cantrell. I've been a client of Jennifer Aguirre for 12 years at Aguirre Fitness. I began the program when I was 45 and 226 pounds. In 12 months, I was able to lose more than 75 pounds. This experience has been life-changing for me. Not only do I look better, but I feel better. I'm stronger, I have more energy, and my confidence level has increased. And just overall, I feel a whole lot healthier. I've also had the opportunity to meet wonderful people in the program, like-minded people who have an interest in living a healthier lifestyle. Uh, yeah, that's, um, and that's what led me to the actual rock bottom. And then so is, what, is that when you got sick? Yeah. yeah. Well, that, that's when I started like just staying at my mom and I had no idea what I wanted. And this is why I tell people, you sh like you can't live your life to please anybody because you're absolutely going to like lose your mind. So for me, it's like one person would be embarrassed if I was a personal trainer. Somebody else would be proud. So I always say like if I'm going to be living in my own apartment because I was staying at my mom's at the time. But like if I'm going to be paying my own bills and living in my own apartment and doing my own. At the end of the day, the only person that I need to please is myself. Yeah. So that's the reason why it's like I'm constantly like, I don't care how many people don't like the way that I look. I don't care how many people don't like the choices that I make. Um, if they're family, they're supposed to support you. Mm -hmm. If they love you, they would never like put you down for anything as long as you're not hurting yourself. Right. Like I'm not doing drugs or anything like that. I'm just choosing a career. Mm -hmm. So that's literally what led and that's why I'm like so big on people like making the decisions. And that's also the reason why I am the way that I am when I make my own decisions. Like I try not to ask for too much advice from people because I feel like if I made a decision to do something, was it because they gave me the advice or right. because I decided to? So I've always kind of done things on my own whether it was before that when I left home at 16 so I, I don't typically like to ask people for advice because I just I, I, I need to know that I'm the one that made the decision and then I could sit and be at peace with it man Jen you know Jen is uh, an amazing person I think she is literally one of the original angels walking around on earth I will never forget the first time I met her it's been six years that I've been lucky enough to call myself one of Jen's friends but you know I never knew then when I met her that this would end up being somebody who is this close to me or who is this dear to me. She's just an all around amazing person. You know, I've never met somebody with the ability to really reach out and touch so many people in a positive way. Not just like fitness or not just like mentally, but just everything overall. Everybody that I've ever talked to 
or had a conversation with that's come into contact with Jenna Geary is just, you know, you can you can literally see it. You can see her aura rub off on those people. And honestly, I think it's rubbed off on me a little bit too. Like I said, you know, I've never met somebody who is as genuine, kind-hearted, amazing, relentless as Jenna Geary. She's literally a superhero and you are lucky if you get to call her your friend. So I started working at New York Sports Club. I was working with my best friend, Myrna. Um, her husband got transferred out. This will be quick. Her husband got transferred out here for work and um, I came out here to visit her on April 23rd of 2005. Uh, she was very slick in her approach to introduce me to the fitness manager at um, the Pleasant Hill Valleys. When I was at New York Sports Club, I really wanted to be a fitness manager, but um, I didn't... I, I, I wanted to be a fitness manager because there's only so many people as a trainer that I can touch. Yeah. But if I can mentor trainers to be better versions, because there are some really crappy trainers out there that can care less. I mean, you were just talking about it in a video today. That can care less. They just want to do it because they look good or because whatever. They want to make extra money. It's not that they're really, truly passionate about changing people's lives. So if I can only hire people that are really passionate, since I'm part of the interview process, coach people, then even though I will only have 20 clients, if I have 15 trainers and they have 20 each, those are more, more, more lives that I can touch. But at New York Sports Club, if you're going to be a, a fitness manager, you can't um, uh, have clients. So I'm like, I, I want both. So when my girlfriend moved out here at Valley's, they allowed you to do both. So mm -hmm. you could be a fitness manager and have clients. So she kind of like set that up and he basically closed me. So he said to me, if you can move out here on June 15th, I have like four trainers that are going away to school. So I know, and at the time, so not only was I a personal trainer at New York Sports Club, but within the first year of me working at New York Sports Club, um, I, um, I started working for the school that certified me. So I was training trainers, I was doing admin work, and then twice a year they would give CECs to personal trainers to keep their certification up to date. So I basically have like four jobs. I worked seven days a week for the first couple of years because I needed that emotionally. After I got out of the hospital, I needed, I, that's why I always tell people like distraction is the be best method when you're going through something, but don't distract yourself so much that you like then don't deal with the problem. It's just distraction enough. And then like I did a lot of, um, ther like I did a lot of reading. I would go to Barnes and Nobles all the time with my MP3 player. Again, I'm showing my age here. Um, and I would just listen to music and read. My name is Karen. I'm 62 years old and I've been with Jen since 2010. I lost over a hundred pounds in less than six months. Great workout. Getting back to uh, what got me out here and my kids. So I um, literally bought my one-way ticket to move out here June 20, June 15th. I got, I wanted to make sure that I had enough time to get all of my clients because I was totally booked. I was training literally from 5 a.m. until 12 work out, I would do cardio in the morning, um, then train. Then I would go over to the school and I would do admin work in the middle of the day and then go back. And then on Saturday and Sunday, I would work from like seven to two. And, um, and then, so basically when I moved out here, um, Kenny was his name, he's like, all right, you're gonna walk in the door with X number of uh, clients and then we just gotta prospect and get you busy and then I'll mentor you to become a fitness manager. When I first met Jen, I was actually mesmerized because I was just getting into the whole bodybuilding game. I had been on my own fitness journey for a couple years, but I was really tapping into pretty much like optimal possibilities whenever it came to my physique and just my perspective. And Jen was definitely eye candy for me. Um, and then once I met her, I got the New York pot side of her and I absolutely cannot get enough of it. Um, but our friendship didn't really happen until months later. Um, I mean, we were very cool with each other always and I love Jen's energy. It's contagious. But there was a point where her and I were like, let's get a workout in together. Let's do some glutes on Friday. Well, let me just say that was the last Friday I've ever done glutes by myself because Jennifer Aguirre is my official glute bestie every Friday at 10.30. <laughs> but I will say 
Jen hasn't just helped me elevate in the gym. She actually has helped me elevate outside of the gym. She has brought so much wisdom and knowledge and perspective and just the yin and yang to life to me. And there's nothing I absolutely love more than guidance. And I'm never the person that thinks that they're the smartest in the room. I always think that there's room to learn. And whenever it comes to Jen, I always learn something new. Um, given her past, it makes her who she is. And there is nothing that I would ever change about that woman. Even if I have the opinion, but Jen is all around the hardest B-I-T-C-H I have ever encountered. And I am quite a lucky girl to have her. Then I moved out here, my girlfriend started training with Christian, who's my ex-husband now, but she was training with him. So she was a, a Group X manager and so she was- a trainer too. And so Christian was a trainer too. Mm -hmm. So we met and then I ended up staying with Myrna for a little bit. Myrna's my friend. So I stayed with her from June 15th to August 1st. And then Christian owned a house, so I rented a room in his house. I moved in in August. We started dating in September. I moved into his bedroom in November. <laughs> So that was like really super fast. Yeah, I'm gonna take some rent. Then, then, <laughs> then we um, got married in June the following year. So June of 2007. Uh, and then we had Koa in, um, I got pregnant in September. And then in the June of 2008, we had Koa. Um, then for years, uh, we wanted to give him a brother or a sister. I had a really hard time getting pregnant with him. Um, I was actually on bed rest. I had to do a lot of medication. I had to have, I had like a pouch. I tried to work for like three days and I couldn't do it, but I had like an IV in my leg at a, at a pouch with like this like thing. Walking around with the IV. Not, well, not one of those. <laughs> and it, like I wore like a fanny pack. And, um, and then I was on bed rest for a month and then I didn't have to do that. But prior to that, like I was on all these different types of medication to be able to get pregnant. And then I got pregnant with him. And then fast forward, well, I like all these tests were run and I just couldn't get pregnant again. So then fast forward, we started the adoption process and it took about two and a half years and Amir is adopted. So um, he's, we literally got him straight from birth, straight from Biological mom to mom, literally in the next room we were there in JJ Virginia. JJ to Jen. Yes. Okay. The JJ. The JJ to Jen. Okay, got it. Yeah. Um, and um, and that's it. So he's uh, they're seven years apart. So Ka Amir's uh, seven and Koa is fourteen. Um, both. I'm just gonna brag a little bit on my kids. Both, and it's a combination of good parenting. Even though for the past two years it's been co-parenting. You're raising as weapons. As yes, as I'm divorced, but. They're both straight-A students. Um, Amir is autistic, and he was doing speech therapy and behavioral therapy when we were in California, and within like the first few months of us being out here, he did not need it anymore. Mm -hmm. So now, straight-A's, and then Koa, straight-A's, ever since we moved out here to Vegas. Koa is an amateur Muay Thai fighter. He started out at three and a half doing jiu-jitsu, and then at five started doing Muay Thai. He's had 26 fights. He only lost one, but I don't even count it. It was a smoker. He's got five as an amateur. He's got, a smoker means like a little like in-house one, not oh. like anything big. That's ah, what they call them. Okay. Um, and then uh, five as an amateur, and he has a belt. Um, and then he just started wrestling, but like his heart is in Muay Thai. And um, Amir does jiu-jitsu and Muay Thai. Um, and like I said, so they're both athletes and straight-A students. Oh, hello. My name is Igor. I'm Jennifer's best friend. Yes, I am the only one. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, Jennifer has so many friends, like so many people in town and all over the globe knows this lady because she's just amazing we met each other like about a year ago and we bonded since then and we have so much fun together she pushes me forward um yeah she's really hard on me sometimes when i cannot be good to myself she's there for me and as you guys know this is jennifer she wants the best for every for each of us yeah she's my best friend i love you jennifer so tell me about competition life. 
Um, so, uh, I did my first competition eight months after I gave birth to Koa, but um, I literally was 147 pounds the day that I went in to deliver Koa on his due date, which was uh, June 13th. And when I got, when I went back to work um, two and a half months later, I was 135 pounds. <laughs> So, I'm sorry, I was 147 when I got pregnant. I was 185. I don't know where. Yeah. Whoa. 185 on the day I got to the hospital and weighed in, and then they induced labor, and 185 to 135. Wow. So, I lost like 51 pounds or whatever. I think it was 186. And um, I did double days. So Christian and I both did double days. Like, I would go in the morning, then he would go, then I would go, then he would go. Because we both took leave at the same time. And when I went back to work, because I was determined to go back to work looking bomb. And when I went back to work, they were like, you literally have been gone for exactly three months. You just had a baby two and a half months because I left two weeks before his due date. Because we knew we were inducing labor. And um, they're like, you look like you can get on stage. And it took him a couple months to convince me, but a bunch of the members over at Bally's, they were like, you should really compete. And that was the first time I had ever competed because they convinced me to compete um, because I had just had a baby. So that was basically the thought process. I'm gonna compete so I can show women that you could have a baby and be a full-time fitness manager, work all day. It was an empowering move. Right, Yeah. so I did it then and then I shut it down. Then in 2010, we opened up our own business so then it was a whole different dynamic. So in 2011, I competed again to show people that you can own a business and have a one-year-old or have a three-year-old um, and that you can still do that. Then I shut it down completely. Then we gave birth, we, we uh, adopted Amir and I don't, for me, I'm always trying to give myself goals and I don't know what it was, but the day we got back from Virginia, I said, I need to give myself a goal. And at the time, I was 135 pounds still for years. I stayed at the exact same weight. My legs look nothing like they look now. I had li literally no legs and no butt. Um, no legs, no butt, no nothing. My upper body just overpowered my legs. So I said for the first time ever, because I've always done my own nutrition, my own everything, I'm gonna hire somebody. So in 2015, right when Amir was born, I hired somebody. Horrible experience with that guy. So that was like maybe seven months that I worked with him and then hired another guy, this guy Johnny, who I worked with for like four years. Amazing, and I decided to compete. 2015 and 2016, um, I won like local shows. Um, and then 2017 and 2018, I did nationals so I could try to get my pro card, which I don't think I looked like a pro, so I'm glad I didn't get my pro card. Mm -hmm. um, and 2017, I got fourth place. 2018, I got second place, but I did masters. So um, they only give pro cards to first place in masters. So I missed it. And then I shut it down. It's right at the time that I was um, started my 30-day challenge. So I hired uh, Bedros Koulian, who's like a business uh, coach, big name. We, we've always, on and off throughout the years, we've always worked with big name, this uh, guy Rocco Castellina, my ex-husband, he hired him. So we, I, like you, you got to invest in marketing when you own your own business. Like you would, you would Google fried chicken in Hercules and our business would come up. That's how we were ranked. Hi, my name's Lydia, and I've been training with Jenna Geary since 2016, and I'm also a personal trainer myself. Uh, the reason why I started training with Jen is because of her level of commitment um, and how, how hard she pushes both herself and her clients. She has very, very high standards, um, and she's encouraging and aggressive and lights a fire under your ass when you really need it. Um, so I feel for me, she's been really, really helpful the times in my own training uh, where I feel like I lose my motivation. Um, she's there to keep pushing me and make me do weight that I don't necessarily want to do or do rep numbers that I don't necessarily want to do. Um, so she's really been huge in motivating me and um, getting me sort of. So I hired Bedros and he mentored me for a year. I spent $20,000 on him. 
for a year's worth of coaching and then I designed my 30 day challenge and I wanted it to be different than all the other challenges that are out there. Like I, I talk to people about what they struggle with. Um, they check in with me weekly. It's not just before and after pictures after the 30 days. It is weekly check-ins. So on Saturdays during my challenges, I am doing anywhere between 80 to 100 emails between my clients and the 30 to 40 people that are in the challenge. So I wanted it to be different. And one of the questions is what do you struggle? And I voice note to 80 to 100 people and I teach them about coping skills and all that other stuff. Right. So I wanted to hit the emotional side. That's why I don't call it a weight loss challenge. I call it a transformation challenge because I'm transforming everything. So um, I said I'm going to get my pro card and then I'm going to launch my program. I didn't get my pro card but I didn't care. So I just wanted to launch my program and because it, it wasn't really about the pro card. At the end of the day, I will never train a competitor. No offense to competitors, but I just don't want that. You don't I, want to deal with you. I, I, just kidding. I don't want to deal with you. I'm, a, I'm an easy person to deal with. You are. My, you are. my thing is, is that if I only have room for 50 clients, I want it to be 50 absolutely miserable people that are pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic hypo, hypothyroid, um, single moms that are miserable in their relationships, hate their job. Like I want to mentor them to believe that they can leave that job or go learn a new trade or change their life at the age of 45. I've helped, uh, fi they're gonna, you guys are going to hear some testimonials from some of my clients, but like 50 year olds that have lost 100 pounds, like that, those are the kind of people that I want to work with. So I, if, I, if I'm not going to be training competitors, then I don't really need my pro card. So I, I just shut it down completely. And then fast forward, I move out here to Vegas. I start working with Andy Velsic. I can't believe I said his name right. That's his, oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, I just, I, I had to practice saying it multiple times. So um, I started working with him. I just wanted to get on here and tell you a little bit about my friend and client of two years, Jenna Geary. Um, as a coach, Jenna Geary is a dream client. Uh, she defines discipline and consistency anywhere from her meals to her workouts uh, to her personal and professional goals. She follows through on everything. As a friend, she's always there when you need her. Um, I can I can look out for Jen if I need anything in my life. Uh, she's always there for me. Uh, as a coach, she always follows any plan that I write to her to a T. Communication is always on point, and she's just very inspiring to watch um, from a distance and up up close. She motivates me uh, to be a better person, to be a better athlete and to even be a better coach the way I see her following up every morning at 4 a.m. with her clients and her friends, whether it be affirmations, um, clients struggling with uh, food eating disorders, or just someone that is just going through a tough time that needs a friend to reach out to. Uh, Jen is always there up at 3 a.m. sending out voice notes and texts of encouragement to, like I said, all of her friends and clients. Um, and I could go on and on, but I just wanted to get on here and just say, uh, Jen, I love you. You mean so much to me. And I feel so grateful to have met you at Fit Club and for you to have come into my life. You have made me a better person, a better athlete, and a better coach, and continue to do so um, as we continue our relationship and journey together. Um, thank you again, Jen, and um, that's about it. So I just, I'm like, Andy, I want you to take over with my nutrition. And then that's when my body started seeing the craziest changes. And if you guys have been following the channel, you'll see that I've done like the, the try on hauls with my meal plans. And I, um, and I like, I, we push, 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 push. And then we pulled calories back. And then my body just went to a totally different place. Then I ran into Jay and Jay's like, are you dieting for a show? I started doing photo shoots. Then I had photographers reaching out to me to want to do more. And then finally Jay convinced me for- Jay who? Jay Cutler. Oh. Oh yeah. Yeah. I didn't say that, did I? Um, then finally Jay convinced me to do a show, which I made an agreement with him. And I said, if I get back on stage, you and I have to do all leg day because we've been talking about that for two years. So get so it that, together, Jay. That's my way of calling him out. Um, which now this is the second time because I just did it in the last Dude, video. Third also. time's it's hands. Okay. So, so 
then I decided to get back on stage and now I feel like I actually looked like enough of a pro where I should have gotten my pro card. I don't know what's going to come of this, but um, yeah. Hi there, my name is Heather Campbell and I've been with Jen for 13 years now and um, I've been with her through my highs and my lows. Um, she's coached me through my wedding, through pregnancy, and anything and everything in between. And um, I honestly just couldn't imagine my life without her. She is, besides my husband, the second longest relationship in my life. And um, I honestly don't know where I would be without her. She, uh, she helps motivate me and help me just be stronger mentally. Um, you know, a lot of times where I think I would give up, I uh, sometimes think, what would Jen do? And I, I try not to. So for me, it's like, I love the process. I love seeing what I'm capable of. I love staying on track with my food. What am I gonna perform tomorrow? What's my legs gonna look like? How many veins am I gonna have? How much of my legs, What? Uh, how's the sweep gonna look? How inside out can I be? Right? <laughs> like, I just, I love the process. I love the process of pushing, like how many reps am I gonna get tomorrow? So that's why I'm so anal about staying on track and all that other stuff. And I, and I love, loving to go into the gym but the first show that i did the high roller that i won like it was i think it was a very easy prep but then it got a, like it got a little harder when i did masters and i think it was just um when i got my pro card i think it was just a combination of other things that i had going on in my life where it was just i started having attacks two weeks before the pro before yeah. the show yeah. um and i just it started to feel like work because yeah. it was two shows almost back to back. I love it. And, um, and I'm used to like only competing really once a year. That's how I've always done it throughout these years. So I just, I feel like I need a little bit of a break. So when people ask me, when am I gonna have my pro debut? Like I just, I don't know. I kind of just wanna- There's no rush. Right, I just wanna enjoy this. I, I wanna, I also wanna see how big my legs can get. <laughs> Yeah, so maybe. like off season and just keep pushing and then I don't know once maybe Jay will come back up to me and be like you you look like you're cutting again. Are you doing it? I am I doing it? Yeah. What's going on guys? Billy G here, GM of Blacks and Labs. I'm here with the COO of Blacks and Labs, J.R. Newton. Hi, how are you? And our president and CEO, PJ Braun, could not be here today. But we want to talk about a very special person who's been on the team for a number of years now. And her name is Jenna Geary. So Jenna Geary started with us as a Legion member and she's actually stepped up and now she's a salary paid athlete and she is one of the nicest people that I deal with and I uh, basis with all the athletes. Yeah, absolutely. And the amount of people that we see her helping consistently across social media is, is unbelievable. Um, the amount of transformations I've seen and, and you know, the way she coaches people is very unique. She almost brings it as more of a lifestyle type of coach where she really in, in, encourages, you know, empowerment and being positive along with all the diet and all that. And of course she includes our supplements that she feels is appropriate for the clients and their programming. We seriously couldn't be more proud to have her on the team. And we love you, Jen, and appreciate everything that you do. Oh, tell me about your clientele. So, um, like I mentioned earlier, I will never train competitors. Um, for me, I want to work with my, I, I have clients that are 16 years old, 84 year olds. Um, I will tell you a funny story. I had a client in California, uh, 83 year old guy came in in a walker, then using a cane and then was not using a cane within like the first three months of coaching with me. And I'll never forget the day I got a text message from him because he was 35 pounds down and he said, I know this is really inappropriate, but I haven't seen my penis in 30 years. Yes! <laughs> It was the greatest text ever. Oh my ever. god, Homer Simpson moment. And I love when I get messages like that from women in the dressing room crying, putting on clothes that they haven't put on. and So that's my clientele. Hi, my name is Sylvia and I'm Jen's mom. Um, Jen's always had a strong personality. Um, when she was younger, she was more defiant, uh, like she was trying to prove something. Uh, because she felt no one understood her. She went through a lot as a child. Um, she was bullied. There were 
friendship betrayals, school struggles, um, teacher abuse. Her experiences unfortunately led to her eating disorders. She developed bulimia and then later anorexia. Um, she lost so much weight and we were afraid for her. But she is such a strong person. She felt she had to fight for her survival. It's that fighting nature though that make her who she is today. She loves her career more than uh, anyone could ever imagine. She loves her clients. Her clients seem to love her too. Um, I will always admire her strength and her accomplishments. She's just incredible through all the battles she's had to fight. And I'm so proud of her. Love that. So give me the rundown of them tattoos, babe. Um, so almost every one of my tattoos, uh, I've had a cu couple people ask me about. I'm not going to go too much into detail of it, but like my favorite flower is the Stargazer Lily. Uh, these flowers all mean something like independent, powerful woman. Uh, these, my good friend Nate, um, in California, who We're did a lot that. of my... We gotta see that calf. See it. Get it up oh, there. I don't have a good Get it up. One. There we go. Ooh. So that's a silhouette of Koa and Amir. And then March 4th was actually the day that, um, I that legally Amir was ours. So even though we had him, he wasn't legally in the system as me being his mom until March 4th, which I think is cool. Like March 4th, March forward. Oh, oh you like it? Um, and then um, I might as well. So I made this because I, I normally don't like jewelry. And um, so I wanted to make a necklace, which I will tell you, I had dermals. Like I, yeah, all, I, I, made, I made a necklace. And then, and then I had a Crohn's attack and I was in the hospital and all the wires were pulling on it and they all got infected. So I took it out and I asked Nate to make me a tattoo version of it. Wow. So um, then this is the Twin Towers, like I said, and the Burning Bird. Um, uh, this was, I did some, for my sister. These two flowers mean something. I have pers pers uh, perseverance, serenity behind my ear. My whole back piece is for Koa. It, it is a little combination. It's got a little something Christian in there, like water and fire. He's, I'm a water sign. He's a fire sign or the other way around. And with water and fire makes smoke and Koa is an air sign. And then it's like, uh, it says Koa. It says strong mind and body in Chinese writing. I hope that's what it says. And, and then it's just. She's a dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> it's not what it says. <laughs> this whole back piece was because I thought I was only going to have one kid. So, and then I, I needed to get a little something for Amir, but I had no other room and I want to keep one leg bare and I want to keep one arm bare. Mm -hmm. So I'm basically done, but there are a few tattoos that I want to work on. This was done by an apprentice and I lie to people and tell people that it was a drawing for my son because it's so bad. <laughs> uh, and then this is the Italian flag. And I actually have the Caesar Gracie Jiu Jitsu symbol because I'm a blue belt and I am the fastest female that Caesar has ever promoted. I got my blue belt in 13 months. Yeah, I did. And then these are all Italian flowers that Nate did research and they symbolize me and who I am as a woman. You're literally a garden. And, um, and then and there's I'm, those abs you were talking about. And then I have a little You're like an Mother angel. Nature. Mother Nature. And then I have, a, of course, I have a, yeah! a lion. Hey! I didn't, want, I didn't want a female lion. I wanted a male lion because I'm. But the like, female lions are the hunters. I know. I know. I didn't realize. <laughs> I, I just liked all the hair. And Drive the out of the Yeah. Hi, I'm Teresa, uh, Jen's sister. Um, you know, it's been no secret that she's had a tough life. You know, uh, especially growing up with ADHD in the 80s and 90s when it was less accepted and understood. Um, you know, parents, teachers, family, uh, friends, you know, had a hard time understanding her and, you know, her actions or her quote unquote choices or understanding that, you know, she couldn't help some of her behaviors. And so it made relationships for her tougher, you know, especially my father had a hard time understanding that. Um, you know, so I just feel like that uh, circumstance 
you know, made, it, it shaped and molded things going forward for her. You know, she was always abrasive, abrupt, um, impulsive, um, very strong headed, but very passionate, you know, and ironically, those are some of the um, traits that make her successful today. Um, but, you know, she had to become independent very early on, um, you know, as a result of the relationships and stuff that she had. You know, when you don't feel supported at home or friends or family, you have to rely on yourself. And so, you know, she moved out at a very uh, early age and, you know, she was determined to, you know, make things happen on her own. And, you know, that was one of the things that I admired so much about her growing up was how she was able to just like travel on her own by herself, like get in the car, just drive, go anywhere. And she had, had no fear and it's exactly the opposite of me. So, you know, um, you know, I admired that about her, how she was always so fierce and independent. Um, you know, but I still, I still think after all of that, she longed, you know, for approval. Um, and, you know, which led to eating disorders and, you know, all that, um, which, you know, through therapy, and I remember the book that, that was like really impactful for her was The Four Agreements, you know, she started reading and stuff and she ended up, you know, bringing herself back, you know, she even healed her Crohn's disease without medicine, you know, she was, when she was determined, she got something done, you know, and I think that was one of the things, you know, that also led to the fitness, it's like she found solace in fitness, I think, because it was the first time in her life that uh, she felt rewarded, not only by her own fitness accomplishments, by, but by a, being able to help people. You know, um, I think she got from her clients what she could never get from her family and her friends, which is acceptance, gratitude, compassion. They love her, she loves them. She sacrifices sleep and, you know, family time and personal time, um, you know, to be able to give her clients what she needs. And I, and I just think helping others has helped her love herself. And, and she's come such a long way. And as tough as life has been for her, it's actually one of the, it, it's benefited her and shaped and molded her to become who she is today, which is, a true warrior. I mean, if I had to put, uh, describe her in, in one word, it would probably be perseverance. Um, and you know, I admire her and I'm so proud of her. Tell me about your friends. Um, okay. So I will say I didn't always, I wasn't, I didn't always have friends. Like, I, like I said, I'm, I'm a very like independent person, but the reason why I wanted to put that in here is because I just want to show appreciation because I truly feel like I am the happiest, the most peaceful, and I'm in the best place ever. I'm single right now, and I know, you know, of course, everybody wants to find that person who they're going to spend the rest of their life with. Right now, I don't have that, but it doesn't mean that I'm not happy. I'm blissfully happy. I have a great job, I have great kids, and I have a lot of amazing friends, one of which is Danielle. I feel like me and you were like spirit. Like are like I have like a young slash old soul and you have like a you are young and have a very young slash old soul. So like you at 23 remind me of me at 23, which is when my life really started. Mm. And like you have this insane work ethic, which is just like how I was. Like you don't make excuses. Like I just, so very, you're a very good friend. Then Igor became my best friend. He's like my spirit. Like I, I you can't not laugh when you're around him, even Absolutely. if he's not in a great mood. He's which not everybody's, even really my friend. I'm like, yeah, we're, I agree. Like if people still want us to do like a little sitcom and I'm probably going to do it where I just need to get somebody to hang out with us all day and follow us around. Oh, Danielle, okay. So Danielle's just offered her services. I met Jen in August. It's February now. When I started with her, I was 155. I wasn't eating well. I was sick also. I had like a stomach bacteria that was just making me um, nauseous and tired. And I was just all around having a terrible time, overweight, everything, dehydrated. Started training with Jen, started on the meal plan, and it is now six months later, and it's just made a huge difference in my life. Before, I was low on energy, you know, struggling with, you know, health issues, and 
my food intake and everything and now I'm stronger mentally I've changed I think emotionally I've changed I've lost over 15 pounds I think right now I'm at like 17 pounds lost it's made a huge difference in my energy level and everything and now I'm actually owning my own salon suite which is amazing so my business has had a huge benefit from you know becoming coached by Jen and also I think befriending Jen because she's somebody who genuinely cares about you she's not just some random trainer who you see a few times a week she's like someone that I can count on and like call somebody who I feel that cares about me and that I care about her as well so I think it's just been an amazing journey for me and I want to stick with her forever if I can for the rest of my life just keep you know training with her I think why do you push so hard? You know, because I noticed you never quit. Okay. So what's crazy about, and the reason why I really wanted this in there is because Dr. Mike, so from Renaissance Periodization, I'm on his YouTube channel. I've been on quite a few times. And I will say, and I actually thanked in the last video, I thanked all the people that are his followers because I've never been in a video and literally had maybe one negative comment. They are all like, such amazing people always making comments the, like three people were like she's my favorite person that you have on the channel and he's got a channel that's got millions of views on his videos so he was running a live huh he was doing a live or it was just a video no we were doing a video and he asked me that question mm -hmm. like why do you push as hard as you do mm -hmm. so here is the reason why I refuse and this literally even in jiu-jitsu I have never tapped out because I would rather die or pass out than have somebody see me quit. I would rather physically not be able to lift the weight than see somebody watching my video and I, I kind of feel like crying right now. I don't ever want somebody to see me quit because if I quit on camera, quit and eat something I'm not supposed to, quit on a, a on anything like this that's also the reason why i wanted to quit on the show but i publicly made a video and i said i so i've been thinking about it every single day i don't want to do this show i don't care about being an ifbb pro i already am a pro in my eyes why do i need to do this and i said i'm doing this on purpose because if i put it out there then i won't quit because if if i quit then i'm teaching my clients or anybody that's watching me that it's okay to quit so again, I would rather completely die, I would rather be choked out in jiu-jitsu than do this, than tap out. I would rather fully tap out and hit complete failure and Andy or Dr. Mike or somebody has to lift the weight off of me than for me to actually say, I can't do it because I might not physically be able to push it up, but I'll never say I can't because I'll just try until I physically cannot. Right. So that's my message and that's the reason why I don't quit. So you hear that, guys? Don't get in a fight with Jen, because she's going to continue Until to I keep die. going. <laughs> Until I <laughs> so die. So you can knock her out. <laughs> my name is Aaron Perez. My wife and I started working out with Jen about six months ago. Uh, it was around my birthday, and we both didn't like where we were at with our bodies and just with our life in general. And so we wanted to make a change, and we found Jen online. We are so thankful that we were able to get in contact with her and start working with her. Uh, my wife has had a, a big difference in her life. I have also um, seen a big difference in my body, in my my mentality, my emotions, and uh, just in life in general. Right? I work at a computer all day, and so I don't really get to move around as much. So it was very necessary for me to start moving, and it was hard to start to go from working at a computer for many years and not working out to moving, right? And getting getting that movement and start working and uh, getting that exercise in. And by myself, I knew I couldn't do it, and Jen then stepped in, and, and she definitely helped us. And so now I feel way better, I have so much more energy, I am um, more comfortable throughout my day, and honestly I'm just excited for, for the transformations that, that are going to continue happening as I'm here with, with Jen, but super thankful and I'm very blessed to be able to work with Jen and um, yeah, just be in contact with her. Right. So it's President's Day. Is that what day it is? Yes. President's Day. So they're home from school. And um, this is Amir. Can you say hi? Not to me, to them. 
And then this is Koa, Hi. my little beast. And um, on the board over here next to us uh, is my vision board. We still gotta fill that in. Um, so mine is almost Hi. filled in. But I just wanted to end with this. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you guys see why I do what I do, because I really do do it for them. Absolutely. And for you. Um, okay, say goodbye. Ready? Bye. Bye! Okay, so as I sit here on Wednesday, multiple days after filming the documentary with Danielle, um, and receiving quite a few uh, of the videos that you guys have already watched, um, it has been an emotional two days. Uh, my sister's video I woke up to on Tuesday morning, couldn't stop crying, couldn't even do emails for the first like 10 minutes because I was a mess. Um, it's also bringing back, I, I did mention to you that in the documentary that there's a lot of stuff that I don't remember. Uh, a lot of my life I feel like I was being told it. Um, like I completely forgot about the teacher bullying when my mom mentioned it and my friends betraying me and my, I, I didn't forget about the bullying, I just forgot to mention it to you guys. Um, so, you know, there's a lot in my life that I've been through that I can't even remember, but there's a, a, a purpose to that. And, you know, I don't need to try to relive it, but, you know, I'm, I'm glad that it's bringing all this stuff up and I'm glad that I'm sharing it with you guys and I'm glad that people are sharing it so that you can see that you can get dealt a tough ass hand, pardon my French. Um, but it does not mean that you cannot live your best life because I am living my best life right now. Um, I also wanted to end with this because I did not mention it. Um, if there is anybody, like I said, uh, if there's anybody that is inspired by this, if there's anybody that's watching this and wants to coach with me, go to the description and all the information about my website and how you can coach with me and there's a contact me button on the website that I showed you guys upstairs in the background, um, upstairs, like that's where we originally did Monday's video. Um, please reach out to me. If you feel like this video is going to inspire someone, please share it. Like I say, like, at the, usually at the end of every YouTube video, like, subscribe, share to the channel, whatever. Um, but I encourage you to do that um, for this video. Share it as much as possible, get the word out, and again, it's not about what I look like, it's about what I can bring to the table for a client. Um, it's about the way that I coach, um, and that's it. So, uh, I am going to go get ready. It is 5.59 right now. Both of my kids are upstairs. Um, they are going to wake themselves up because they're both, you know, Koa has an alarm. He's going to wake up. He'll wake up Amir. They'll start getting ready. Um, I, make Koa's bre I make Amir's breakfast and lunch. Well, actually, Amir sometimes pours his own cereal. And uh, Koa gets his own stuff ready, and then we're going to leave the house at 7 o'clock and then get back here and train clients on the computer at 8.30. Um, so, again, thank you so much for watching. Please, like I said, like, subscribe uh, to the channel, share this video, and if you would like me to help you become the best version of yourself, Go to the website in the description and I will talk to you very soon.